Is it Tuesday? There it is. All right. We're live on Facebook. Perfect. Good evening, guys. Adach Media Live. What day are we? Thursday, July 1st. It is July 1st, guys. I'm David Ojakian. This is Greg Nemec, co-founder of Adach Media, and our one and only producer, Richard Vartan Gasanjan, and longtime friend. We have a very special guest tonight. Uh, gentlemen, it's great to see you guys uh, virtually tonight on Adach Media Live. How's everybody doing? Uh, very well, David. Thank you for the intro. Um, uh, Rich, how are you? I know it's hotter and hotter in California. Let's dive into it with the intro. We have a very, very special guest. We have a show that's a little bit unlike every other, any other because there'll be the utilization of all the languages of the diaspora. We're going to be speaking in Russian, predominantly in Armenian. I will do my best to translate. And uh, we all, of course, English will be the main the language of kind of relaying the information. Um, let's jump in, David. Let's uh, let's intro who we have today. Sure, sure, sure. So we have a very special guest joining us from Armenia. It's very early morning. Uh, yeah, uh, so very good, guys. So look, I'd like to welcome in, and Greg, thank you so much for making the connection for us here on Arash Media, Mr. Jivan Abadisyan. He's an award-winning filmmaker. He's actually Golden Apricot International Film Festival award winner. Uh, for the film Tebanik, right? I believe that was uh, the film. Uh, he's, and he's he's done a number of films. We're going to talk about his journey. Uh, he also hails from Artsakh. Uh, we're going to get his thoughts on uh, what's happened there. And he was living in Artsakh during the war. And we're looking forward to speaking with him about his upcoming film as well. Welcome, Mr. Avedisian, to Arach Media. Thank you so much for being here this morning in our in Armenia. Thank <laughs> Um, and uh, interview head. So I had the pleasure of being introduced to uh, Jivan by uh, Arevik from uh, a fellow fellow listener from a friend from from the Bay Area, um, uh, devoted uh, you know uh, uh, patriot of Artsakh and someone that uh, I, I know very well and is a good family friend of ours. The, the introduction was, uh, was amazing and uh, Jiwan in essentially gave me the opportunity to screen his, his films. I am floored by the quality and the, uh, and the cinematic and thematic value of these films and how centered they are about, uh, around the uh, existence and uh, uh, the process and the survival of the Artsakh nation. So I watched the, the, the kind of a, a movie that has a three sections called Tevanik. It's essentially about three kids growing up in, in Artsakh during the time of war. Um, I watched a, a, a Gateway to Heaven, which is uh, a kind of juxtaposition uh, around uh, a photographer and, um, <clears throat> and a opera singer, a foreign photographer and a, and a descendant of Artsakh, um, kind of meeting up in, 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 our, in uh, Artsakh. Um, and I believe there was a one more movie. Uh, uh, remind I, I, I want uh, the name is The Last Man Standing. I believe it's uh, uh, it's it was about a villager in in Artsakh. And this movie actually kind of took my breath away the most because it was a very complex story. It was essentially everything was in in Azeri. It's about an Armenian that stays behind. As, as everybody has already left the region. And he stays behind because he needs to take care of a, uh, a, a woman that's not doing so well. She is his adopted daughter and all the complexities around that. Um, if you haven't seen, some of the movies are not available uh, currently, but some are. So Tevanik, award-winning movie, is available on Amazon. So if you haven't seen it, I would highly, highly recommend. Baro Begege, Jivan Shadurachem, Shadurachem, <laughs> Uh, so Jivan essentially says thank you for giving the it's, it's amazing to talk to the diaspora thank you for being able to you know uh, uh, devote some time to him and is and one thing we're going to dive into is his, his current project which is an important part of the discussion today um, 
happy to have him, happy to talk about his films and uh, what is next in store. Skasenk, so Arachi. Ah, it's it's Artsakh Um and he's very happy that he could see the Artsakh flag. This is not uh, this is not a commercial. This is this is what I believe is uh, important for the survival of our nation. I see at the at the shot 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 karevor yer kire mer hayutan hamar at the at the ormar at the rosha and there. Um, skasenk harzerit. Um, so Arachi harze. Կարող եք մի մի կրացի ռուսերեն ասեմ կրացի նամ ռասկազած կակ ու նաչելի կինո զաչեմ ու նաչելի իմ վաշը վաշ պուծ կինո how did how is it that you entered the the film industry and why did you choose that this this direction ոչ շատ շատ երկար պատմություն է դժվար է կարժ ներկայացնել դա առաջի պատերազմի ժամանակ է դեր Ինսուկաներին է, եպ ես զգսեցի սիրել երազել, որ ինոր զբաղվ եմ։ Եվ մարաչի կայլս է սեպանակերտի թատրոնում, աշխատանքի անցավ, Վարամպապայզանի անվան թատրոնում, հետո հերսատեսությունում, եվ ապա � So Jivan mentioned that it's uh, the journey in film started during the war, um, first war, the, the initial war when we say uh, the the original war in the early 90s. Um, it's, uh, and then he he kind of slowly progressed into uh, working and studying in the theater in Stepanakert, and then finally uh, uh, graduated to going to study uh, in Yerevan, which is you know. Center. Of, uh, <laughs> կամ զգացել եմ գուրծը հերվից, որտեր ես փոքր էի տաստարեկանի հետ ժամանատ, բայց այն ու ամենային ես շատ իրադարձություն է, շատ դեպքեր եմ զգացել, ինձ համար կարևոր էր խոսել այդ մասին, երբ զգացի, որ կինոն լ Excellent, excellent. So he says, although, you know, he, uh, the, the, the early onset of the war, he was a young child, he was 10 years old or so, but there are, there are, uh, there are, there are feelings and there are things that he saw, that there are, there are stories that he, he, he witnessed that he wanted to film was a great uh, avenue to uh, portray and tell those stories. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And through film, it's a great, great opportunity and a great medium to tell the story of Artsakh to the rest of the world. And uh, if I may add, he does a great job at it. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, next question. Uh, uh, no, I think Where can we find the films? Առաջի և երկոր վիլմերը արդեն ոնլայն կան, ամազոն հուլու և էլի պլատվորմերի վրական, թեղանիք և դլաստին հապիտենտը, իսկ գեի հեղնը կորոնայի պատճարով, համավարակի պատճարով հետազգրեց ծուցադրությունը և � Los Angeles Lender Kaki, Alex Kino Tatrunitz, Mel American Tima Adrine, Galon, Arturo Ashatum and Tulsam, Mess Shonaka Sunnet. If the Rains the Tartan, Ambush America, if Canada, Shujaga, Sunaka, Europa, Eval. I think you could Amazon online car, Amazon Hulu editor. Excellent. So the, 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 the first two films, right? Uh, uh, the Last Inhabitant and the uh, the original, which is the Tevanik, they are readily available. Actually, David, Richard, and I know, saw that they are available on Amazon and I believe on Hulu as well uh, through subscription, or you can purchase the, the the viewership. I highly, highly recommend that everyone goes and do, does that. The story of Artsakh that I saw earlier uh, this week was unbelievably told in through the, the you know it's probably one of the best depictions of territory people and everything that I have witnessed so direct to the to 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 the the the, the authentic story of Artsakh. 
Um, so those two, you can you can currently watch like even tonight via Amazon or Hulu. The last one, which is uh, Gates, uh, Gates to Heaven, um, it, it unfortunately due to coronavirus, it was the, the, the there was a postponement in its release. Uh, it has been released in Armenia, I believe, but there's going to be a premiere in uh, Glendale coming up this September, which I believe before the show started, Jivan and all of us spoke that he will be here in Glendale for that premiere. And then hopefully it can do its rounds through the rest of the diaspora. Okay. Hello. Great. Looking Alrighty. forward to that. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Um, David even pitched David Zezi Asezi to Karelie, Karoheng Mez at Kinon Berenk San Francisco Premier on end. All sorts of options are in the air. Um, Mengi Deng were at at Yekrot Paterazmi Jamanak Duk Arsahume. Можете нам рассказать, как как это было? Я понимаю, что очень трудные времена были. И вот эти 44 дня, что можно описать миру про про вот это время с точки зрения человека, который там вырос? So I asked the question, can you tell us about the 44 days that you were witnessing this yet assault on Armenia and Artsakh? Um, however difficult it may be, just give us a summation from a point of view of someone that grew up there. Yes, I think all the results on the Mirel Artsakhum, but there has been a touch come. Yes, Miratele, Stepanagetti, TV, Humbi, Yvette said, Yaganastum in Karahanum, and Box Artsakhita as Kum. So he was in uh, the for 30, 30 days of the war. He was in Stepan with the, the with the uh, with the with the film crew at the at the at the, at the TV TV station in Stepan Akert uh, to be able to kind of uh, film and. A report on what's going on. If you say any short the sound, the Hanao Chinaka Agreed make Nahada Sun Mage, make sentence image, come make Kaikum, make film, Nahao Chi. But if you have any Katavet, Artsahija over Si Handek, the genocide detail Avela. Any Katavet, Artsahija over to them, the Martas Panusunit, Yev Ko Hayaska Pagelut, Akanjanet Pagelut, Yev Peranalut Avela, Borete, in in Zenkevo Gragumi, Kavuna Sambra, Yev Tabatsa Haitet, Yev Ashagi de Dramasi, Astume, Hosume, Yebol Rumi, Santa Gortuna, Borkata Vela, Akahish or Tihande. Very well said. So first thing uh, uh, Juwan's mentioning, what happened in those 44 days plus, uh, it's impossible to sum summarize it in one, two, or a few sentences. Um, but the best way to explain it is that this was uh, you know, a crime against humanity, a crime against the people of Artsakh. It was the continuation of genocide uh, manifested into the 21st century. Um, the utilization of such heavy, heavy uh, uh, shelling and uh, uh, modern day warfare against peaceful citizens of a region. Uh, it was a crime against the people of Artsakh, not just from Azerbaijan or Turkey, but from the rest of the world that literally saw everything and decided not to do anything about it, voice any concern about it, and we've all noticed that. Yes, I was what them were Ashariate as Nilini Alevi, Turkio, Caravalzana, Hagai Data, Nukudate. But yes, Chems Passum, Ashari, Artra Datuciana, I lure for some Ashatel, Ye Imashatanko, Imbeki Arashtane, Yegri, Hartanaka, Kerel Temusi, Yet Partucun Kerel Musi, Ye Kandepi Hartana. Uh, so I uh, uh, can't agree more. So uh, Juan mentions that, uh, you know, he would like to see Erdogan and Aliyah brought to justice 
but he is not waiting for that day. And in reality, what he will be doing, um, I think what we all should be doing is just continue the work, right? And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, carry on the victory and, you know, uh, you know, see the days that we are all will be victorious. Yep, okay. So he mentioned that the, the things that he's been uh, recording and so what, what he what he uh, absorbed and, and, and filmed during the, those those trying days of the of the new new war the recent war uh, he's turning into a project called uh, uh, revival and uh, he is going to try to produce it into an amazing film that is going to kind of portray um, um, what happened. And uh, the, 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 the title of this project is Revival. This is something that we're gonna pivot to talking because there's a lot of things that we would like to kind of uh, help Jiwon and the you know, production team do here in the diaspora. Jiwon, menka at the roli kuning, karo karo heng, tsutang. Uh, the, uh, Richard, yeah, Richard, I think there's a, one of the links um, on the, yeah, on the, on our, on our uh, link tree is the link to the Kickstarter. And in there, there's a video, if we can patiently pull that up. Um, and it's yeah. like, a, yeah, it's like a two minute video. Uh, that would be a great explanation about this new, new project. Yeah, that was a great segue, great segue to the new project. There. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, everything that uh, Jivan will be doing with that, uh, uh, with the release of the old film, will be also as, essentially a bit of a fundraiser for for the new film as well. Get it? Mangutian Jamanak Lino Paderazmi Mech, Yepek Paderazmi Ranchito. Is yes, you him serum the Metatelink Paderazmi Jamanak. Jiva witnessed the most horrendous war in Nagorno Karabakh, Artsakh, for 38 days while the world was preoccupied with the pandemic. Avedisian was selected amongst 3,400 applicants within Burning Island Talent 2020, a talent program within the frameworks of Berlin International Film Festival. One of the first things that drew me to this project is the passion at the heart of the central characters. Revival is a multi-layered, multi-structured film. And as the pieces of the story come together, so has Jivan put together a team, an international team of creative people, which is truly amazing. We've successfully financed the development phase of the film. It is now time to move ahead with production. It is a pleasure to work with this creative team on this important Armenian film project. As costume designers, we bring to life the character's personality through various garments. Revival is a very unique Armenian film production that takes place in many locations around the world in multiple countries and on various continents. I believe film is the single greatest art form. It brings us together, it allows us to dream, and it takes us into other cultures where we can learn more about other worlds. We're super excited for Jivan Avedisian's newest film titled Revival. Our team's looking forward to Jivan adding yet another amazing film to his incredible body of work. Jivan's a great friend of mine, a lot of great vision. Most importantly, he's making a movie on the one Arthur, which is a very important mission. I, myself, as well as our Nexus, will be providing support for the movie. Join the crowdfunding campaign, donate, support, and help keep on make this movie become a reality. Join us, 
Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Your contribution will help us make our film become reality. What is the core of this movie? What's what's the what's the meat? Uh, yeah, what's the meat? Ke inche the project? Revival. Shot is called Bazma Shirt Bazma Karut Patmutuna. Chors the Khawar Hirosuni. Voice make a Haya. Voice make a. Islam doyi make a hira ye make a Aristakam banakan uchuna. Again, artificial intelligence. So the story is uh, just actually as as, as this is uh, I think Jivan's forte. Uh, Tevanik has multiple uh, fa- uh, multiple characters. This is also going to be a, a story of multiple uh, characters, four characters to be to be exact. One uh, is uh, I believe uh, uh, well one is Armenian, one is from Iceland. One is uh, you said Greek, uh, Jew, Jewish, uh, Jewish, Jewish, and then uh, and then one is a uh, 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 AI. A what? AI, AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, artificial intelligence. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I mean, yeah, I'm actually on camera. You know, how can you know more artificial intelligence? I just come from a country. You know, how can you know more? You know, yeah, but basically, the whole thing is not made. Mm-hmm. It'll be one of the first times that you will see an AI part of a film that'll be actually essentially uh, one of the one of the main characters in in, in a movie. Ambush film Karusvata and Tanuma Murate and Druma Ida Armat Nera. Yev Echama part Tanuma de Piazza. So the, the the idea about the, the, the of the movie is uh, the finding of one's roots. And that story leads uh, the characters to Artsakh. Apart from the Razmin Taskung Santvakani, me the Khafimi the Khawar heroes in the Masnakisa Darun Vorpes support on journalists in the Marskat in the Zimvorchi in the Metaka Europa Yuman Boschanka, Yavarachanka Artsakhu. So essentially, one of the characters is a essentially like a ca- a handler for reporters, right? Not a, not a, a soldier per se, and actually also not a reporter, but a handler for 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 uh, for, for reporters, and is also in Artsakh for the first time after a long, long time. Mm-hmm. So and all of the characters involved in the movie, everybody that comes into contact with one another, everything in their lives is starting to fall apart. Because essentially the theme of it is, is once you are, doesn't matter who you are, where you are, but once you are kind of engulfed, you are inside of a war, everything else about your life doesn't matter. Everything else about your life starts to fall apart. So I'm going to do my best to translate this part. So essentially, the AI character of the of the of of the one of the four characters, essentially is uh, witnessing this and is sending a message to the world, saying saying that here in this land we are about to witness the. Uh, what do you call it? the erasure of a people? Is it? Do you see? I am. I am. Okay. 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 But, so 
So, and essentially, wow, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away already. And essentially the, the, the tie-in to the, to the solution to the problems, right? To all the issues of all the characters is actually hidden in the initial war that wasn't resolved, that wasn't, uh, that did not come to, a, to an ending. And essentially, kind of, uh, uh, that's where they will find the the solutions to to to, to all to all the issues of the story. Right. Um, I'm blown away. <laughs> yeah. This is a, uh, um, uh, Jiran. Uh, the uh, uh, we'll, we'll transition right uh, now to the actual uh, the actual part. Uh, Hima, поменяем всю тему на как мы можем помочь, потому что да, сценарий. Супер идея, отличная. А, и самое главное, что сейчас нужно, чтобы этот фильм произошел. А, какие даты, какие нужности? Я понимаю, есть какие-то uh, uh, um, цели, да? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm essentially asking, what, are, what, uh, what needs to happen for this film to come to fruition? Um, I know that there is a Kickstarter and there's a, there's a budgetary need. Um, there's also uh, the, the question of when will this film, if everything goes to plan and everything is okay, when will this film be uh, produced? Okay. So the biggest drive, and this is actually kind of the kicker of this episode, and we will need to make this link go viral, and we'll do our best to do that, is there's a budget. So everything, so, so the script is ready, uh, um, the storyline is there, um, and the budget is already uh, uh, planned in there. It's already uh, what, what is necessary is around what we need to achieve in the month of July is a, there's a, the Kickstarter link for the need of 100,000, of which 60,000 plus has been already collected. So 38,000 is what's necessary uh, to uh, start fulfilling 10% of the budget and uh, you know to, to start producing the film. Invest on the film image, near Drumanel, Nistisanel, make that help at last and Hosen Kian said, where the budgeti Vorosh Ulish Mas investor in Kavakelu. Chat Tabel Kome, Mir Karanak, Ambush Filmic Gumar Havaki, Hajor Tarins Senekranel. So um, there's also obviously uh, 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 investor partners that. Uh, uh, there's an opportunity to, to, to come in from the, you know, the private, private side for for profit, of course, right? Um, and if everything falls in budgetary, uh, you know, budgetary, budget wise, the filming will start next year, and I believe 2022. Um, okay. <laughs> Ինչպես <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Okay, so the cast is already coming together. There are an incredible names that are going to be attached to this project. Although, unfortunately, he, awesome. they, Jivan can't name the names because of obvious trolling reasons and obvious protesting reasons by, you know, the parties at hand, namely, of course, Azerbaijan. Um, but uh, the cast will be phenomenal and there are some big, big heavy hitting names that, uh, that will be attached to this project. Um, 
and and those are you know non non Armenian uh, uh, actors as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, David, Richard, I know you've been listening for a while. I can also be the intermediary <laughs> for the two of you. If yeah. you have any, if you have any question, please, uh, please. So, but we have we have our task at hand. There's a Kickstarter page, and there is a need to fill the gap for uh, for for that for that budgetary need. So, what we all need to do is everybody that's listening right now. There will be a link that's going to go around. We will be promoting that link for a while after, and in the month of July, hopefully, we will help Jivan you know, close that gap. Um, because I've seen it done before and it can be done. Um, I'm opening up the question to you guys. If you have any. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'll am i ask one, Greg, just help with translating. Uh, you know, I think this is amazing. We look forward to helping and promoting revival, seeing revival, seeing Gate to Heaven. I'll share as an actor myself and as someone that aspires to be a filmmaker as well, mm -hmm. What advice would you have, Mr. Abedisian, for someone that might be looking to also tell stories mm -hmm. about Artsakh? Because there's not enough. We, no one knows about Artsakh. How do we do this? I have a story about the war I'd like to tell. Um, what advice would you have for, for getting yeah. started? I know that's a long-winded um, question. Yeah, uh, I think Jivan understood uh, most of your question, but I'm going to utilize my uh, my other language, Russian, to ask the question. So, у, у Дэвида вопрос насчет, uh, какой совет можно дать uh, uh, тем uh, uh, режиссерам начинающим, которые тоже хотели бы uh, рассказать про uh, Арцах? Uh, какие советы есть, как можно эту, uh, uh, этот путь начать? Excellent <laughs> So the answer is, um, first of all, number one, do not be afraid of anything. That actually tells me that the stories around Artsakh are, you know, not taboo, but they, but the bottom line is be, uh, uh, have a, have a story and have the, uh, the ability to work day in and day out to make that story come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Jivan just mentioned, if there's any way that he can help, he will definitely do that as well. Josh, my God, too. Yeah. <laughs> So there you have it. Um, yeah, should we touch on the movie? Yeah, we have so he wants to, yeah, yeah, so he wants to not, and, and, and in the process of making these films, he doesn't just want to tell the story of Artsakh and uh, be very uh, instrumental in uh, reviving Artsakh's uh, uh, movie industry, but he also wants to translate that, uh, those efforts to just globally increase the, uh, the, 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 the cinema uh, industry in Armenia. And in the next 10 years, I think that is definitely achievable from, from and to elevate the stature of Armenian film globally. Right, yeah. Ooh, there's so much, so much we uh, we just spoke about. Um, what I want to just kind of essentially, you know, conclude by, um, I am uh, both blown away by the quality of the films that I saw. I encourage everyone and we will link it uh, uh, to everybody that is listening and everybody that follows Arach Media knows myself, Richard, and uh, to encourage you to go out and watch those films as a test run to what you are about to witness with this new movie called Revival. When Jivan will come in September, I hopefully he will be here um, and do the premiere. Maybe David and I and Richard we will pull him aside and do a premiere in Northern California in San Francisco. And when that happens, uh, we will then be able to witness 
the fruition, the coming of fruition of this new, amazing, phenomenal story uh, entitled Revival. So, um, I mean, I know, and I ac actually have a, have a segue question. Yes, Mia Miad Hartselunem. Я знаю, что другие не, не, не армяне тоже э, 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 арцахскую историю показывают миру. Каково ваше мнение? Хорошо, было, хорошо ли эти истории были сказаны? Последние там, э, я знаю, несколько, не будем говорить кто, но есть несколько проектов, которые про эту войну. Э, вам кажется, э, если человек не из Карабаха, да, если не армянин, если не арцахец, э, Правильно ли их понятие, что произошло с нами? So I just asked a little bit of a talk money. Um, I just asked a, a very, uh, not a controversial, but what is, what is his perception of, there are other uh, uh, projects right now, uh, foreign projects, self-funded projects of non-Armenians depicting of what's going on in Artsakh, what happened. And I just want to know what his opinion is, because obviously he's in film and he probably knows of them without naming who they are. Если это неправильный вопрос, могу не... Нет, с удовольствием отвечу. Но анкет, счет анкет. И проект не то есть яки, да? А мы не знаем, что мы не знаем, что мы не знаем, что мы не знаем, что мы не Падеазимасы. Гахателен Гейни. Натуи Зинатесагнелин Киларе, Мердем. Фосфор, Аркелват Зенкер. Хастадваши Байс. Эф, Тастанец Арамбакоце. Я звестаю, что он азнапец. Нет, а сейчас уду Галес Нетралине Лесарцу. Excellent. So, uh, great, great response to my question, which was, what is Jivan's interpretation of some of the projects that are out there? There are a few by non-Armenians, non-Artsakis. And his answer is this. It's great. Uh, uh, it's great that people are there to tell the Artsakh story, right? But having been in Artsakh, filming in Artsakh, those people, Uh, being on the front lines and witnessing everything that you saw from the beheadings to the stories of beheadings to all sorts of modern warfare that has launched against the peaceful population. How can you keep saying, uh, keep being neutral in the story? How are you not drawn to not take a stance or essentially take a side, but continue being neutral and removed from such a horrible, horrible uh, uh, witnessing of such a horrible story? That was his uh yeah. <laughs> So, uh, the, yeah, and it's actually a, a viewpoint that we've seen also here in the, through Diaspora's lens. Uh, when you are seeing that it's Artsakh essentially against Azerbaijan, against Turkey, against mercenaries from uh, the Arab lands, against Pakistan, I believe a little bit of Afghanistan was also involved there. Um, you know, uh, when all of that is happening, um, 
how can you say the narrative of both sidisms when right. you are seeing that? How right. can you literally uh, state state that when, on, in fact, you are witnessing such a disbalance of of, of powers in, in this conflict? Well, I I would I would offer Greg. I would ask the question, or I would just say. We, we need you to keep telling these stories. We need men like you to keep telling these stories to connect our story with the overall human story because uh -huh. otherwise nobody's going to care and no one is going to make that connection. And uh -huh. so that's why we need men like you to do this. Richard только что сказал, что нам обязательно надо, чтобы вы продолжали нашу историю рассказывать и иметь возможность связать эту историю в Карабахе, в Арцахе, да, с просто человеческая история, чтобы все понимали, что что происходит в Арцахе, это имеет эффект на все, на, на все человечество. Okay. Masina revival. If patriotism is there, if patriotism is in charge, Anu Mars can say it. Just a typical night, Richard Dilasazi. Essentially, that is what revival will be about, Richard. Is that it's 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 the effect uh, that war has on people, regardless of their background, um, and and what it, what it does to and and, and how it reviver, reverberates in other parts. Yeah, artificial intelligence. The government has been saying to me. <laughs> so and also yeah the component of ai being part of the story not having essentially feelings or attachment but having the understanding through process that here on this ground there's an erasure of children men women and uh, of uh, an annihilation of people yeah Amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, it's a tough, tough subject, but uh, we will promote the, your, uh, the Kickstarter. We will make sure that you have the necessary, uh, the funding push that is there, because we've seen it be done for other projects, and I'm sure we can add our uh, muscle to it. We um, yeah, 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 the Bumble. link's already in the feed, right? The link's already in the feed. The link is in the feed. It's going to be in more feeds. It's going to be <laughs> all over the all over Facebook. It's going to be everywhere where we can uh, push this out. July. There is also a timeline. Uh, uh, the timeline is we have to do this in July, and I think the diaspora can definitely, uh, uh, you know, add to it. Um, and yeah. we will do our part. Yeah, that's this month. Gentlemen. Yes, yes, cousin. I will ask you. Make naive some make film chi make tarbel. Filming, <laughs> And to next world, make film a marchi, make a music outcome, make a music Okay. Um, and, and the purpose, yeah, and to, the purpose to understand is that this is just, uh, even though we're fundraising for one project, right? But there's an entire, like, there's, there's a set of projects that are following it, right? And it's essentially one after another to tell the story of Artsakh, particularly one, uh, one project called Blacklist, which is about the, uh, what do you call it, the Russian blogger that was. Uh, a, 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 yeah, Lapshin, Alexander Lapshin, we've reported about him on Arach Media. Uh, he was essentially extradited from Belarus and spent a long time in Baku and his story of how he was blacklisted because he he was in, uh, he, he visited Artsakh and what are the uh, repercussions to, you know, the, you know, the world outside of Artsakh right. and that. Right. Man, so much. Shot, okay. shot, Thank you so much. Uh, we thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for telling the story. We will be connected. We will be uh, in touch. Um, uh, we will see you in September. 
um, and we will make some plans about what we can do in the future and how we can help with more of your projects. Yes, no yeah. Mm -hmm. no Wow, amazing, amazing word. Wow, amazing that word. was, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we have shows that we kind of, you know, yeah, this is, this was to me one, one of, one of those uh, foundational um, guests. I am humbled. Uh, uh, I want to, you know, I want to say thank you to my dear friend Aregak for essentially, you know, and this is what we, Richard David, have wanted to do is we want to create an ecosystem of people, you know, pitching to us, hey, you should pay attention. Right. Um, I've heard about the movie Tevandi. I've known about this director, but not on the level that we just got to know him right, right. now. Right. Right. Um, what he's doing is beyond important. And I'll be honest, I'll look, again, if there are movies that, you know, I'm a fan of things that are Armenian. And if it's subpar, I'll still support it. You know what I mean? If someone says buy an Armenian product, For sure. I don't necessarily like it. I'll just buy it. Right. Y'all, I saw these movies. I was blown away. The accents in these movies. The fact that he had Armenians speak Azeri, right? Which is important to the story. Wow. The fact that one of the movies, I can tell the difference between when a soldier is from Yerevan, predominantly everybody else is speaking in the Artsakh dialect. So he's true to the nature of this. Uh, and in the, some of the movies, you can't stand but cry about what we probably have already right. lost. I didn't want to like, uh, uh, you know, re-traumatize right. him and yeah. say, hey, I saw your movies, that scene and that scene, we can no longer go there, right? Because I, I just know by myself, looking at where he was filming, um, some of those movies cannot happen in the yeah. near future, but they will in the distance. You mean those right. locations, yeah. Anyway. Well, you know, so there's, so there's something interesting, interesting that you brought up. I mean, you know, I liken myself to be not only a music lover and an audiophile, but I, I, I love movies because they, they take me to another place and they immerse me into the story. And good filmmaking with good cinematography and good direction uh, with, with good actors allows you to really be in the pipeline of the story. And so if, if we're talking about someone who not only is telling a quality story that makes you think in multiple levels, but also executes the development and the filming of the film in a way that immerses you in the story with authenticity. That's a, that's a great combination. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. So we'll be, uh, you know, in future times, we'll be talking about this project. We really, really need to do a push because obviously, come on, this is somebody that's telling such a, such an intimate story of such an important part of Armenian, uh, you know, Armenia's nation, one aspect of the Armenian nation, probably to me, you know, here's the flag, the most right. important to me right now. Um, yeah, we need to. Uh, it's, we, and, we need and to you know, film, film costs quite a bit uh, to, to mm -hmm. produce. You would know. Uh, yeah. Quite a bit to produce. You know, you mentioned, I believe, that that, that 100K is 10% of the yeah, budget, yeah. which, yeah. by the way, everyone should realize a $1 million budget. Not it's not it's not super super low budget but it's that i mean in the scheme of things that's a smaller budget film but it's still a substantial amount that has to be raised uh, to produce it so and we got to do everything we can to support it because it is very very difficult even if you make a film to make sure that it is seen but film i agree with everything you guys have been saying is a really and what he was saying it is such an important way to tell stories and Theoretically, it lasts forever. So, well, yeah, um, and, and the other part of it is, is that you know we we've seen, and I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna name any names or anything, but we've seen other cultures who have uh, really worked hard at um, inserting themselves into the the industry of making film, and as a result, their stories are constantly being told, and um, and when you continue to tell the story, you continue to hold space inside the global narrative. Um, and that is a really important position to be in. Um, and so I think that we as Armenians need to do better in, in doing that uh, and executing on that and making that happen because, uh, because it's really important to tell these stories. It's really important to keep uh, our part of uh, you know, our history alive. And, um, and I, I think 
film is a fantastic um, vehicle for that. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for everyone that was watching this. Uh, that you you bared with me because it's the first time I had to. No, well done, great, dude. Great, well great, great job. Great, great, great job. Make this come together because I wanted to. I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to speak with someone simply because that person doesn't, you know, speak English as well as you know the three of us. Um, no, Greg, you opened up a whole new door for us. Uh, so thank you for that, and I think it was it was seamless. It was seamless. So. And before before we pivot to the news yeah. rather than show everything i just want to remind everybody who are watching right now and those who are going to watch this um all the links to all of his uh, his personal website his imdb page all of the links to each individual film are currently up on the stream and on the on the thread here um and there is also some uh, if you read some of the comments you'll find which films are streaming where We've got uh, a couple who are uh, streaming, excuse me, on uh, Amazon Prime. There was there was uh, another one that was streaming on Hulu. Yeah, I believe if that's correct. Um, so you do have the option of watching them, and they are in uh, either Armenian or 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 uh, subtitled. Yeah, they're, they're, subtitled so they're, they're in definitely English. yeah. So as I, as I was watching them, they are subtitled professionally. I mean, right. the, the the production value is David. Going back to what you're saying, million dollars. That seems like you know sizable. I think he makes that million dollars like inflate to what it would be. I don't know, five to ten million in America. That's my opinion. Yeah, it could be, it could be. Yeah. And uh, just a thank you to Ajane uh, Mirzayan. Uh, Ajane, we could be related. Uh, my father's side is Mirzayan, uh, not with a Y though. So we'll see. But thank you, Ajane, for your comments and for helping clarify and answer some right. of the questions. Um, and everyone then that's putting the comments in in support of the guests that we had. So. Thank Perfect. you and well done, Greg, on the translation. Um, great job, guys. Alrighty. Yeah. So I guess um, you know, with the you know, we, we you know, we knew with the, with such an important guest, we will go over our allotted time. But you know, we are also trying to bring the pertinent news that is accumulating in in Armenia and Artsakh, and yeah. we're about to just kind of take the next twenty five to thirty minutes, you know, going through what has uh, transpired in the past week that we have not been uh, on air. Yeah, I think it probably makes sense, guys, right, to start with just picking up where we left off on the election, right, guys? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, uh, and you guys feel free to chime in on this, too, not to elongate our, our time, but just to point out to everybody that this show, this podcast, we are sharing our opinion mm -hmm. on the news that we are finding. Mm -hmm. We're checking numerous sources. Uh, you'll see a lot of the most common ones that we pull from are Aspares. Azata Tune, the Armenian Report on Instagram, uh, Zartok Media on Instagram, uh, and so on. Tert, uh, to name if, to, to name some of the main ones. Civilnet, uh, and then locally, ANCA and I mean uh, Assembly of America for news that's going on with Congress uh, here in the U.S. But we are going to take that information, share it with you, and then we're going to provide our opinion. Um, right. You know, we're not journalists, Greg. You and I, we, we used to always start off the episode by yeah. saying that. Uh, we found it wasn't necessary to have to do it every episode, but hey, just so everyone knows, this is our opinion, and we encourage everyone to click the links, view, search Armenian News yourself, and to form your own opinions as well. So I just but I would to like to say something. This is our educated opinion. Yes, not yes. just three, uh, you know, uh, dodos trying to like speak right. into the speak right. into the you know in, 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 into Facebook Live. We found a niche. Uh, and a need to do something right. useful for the community. And in the, and in the meantime, we're bringing amazing pertinent uh, uh, guests to also add to the conversation. And yes, yes there are certain things that are happening in Armenia and I do have an opinion on what's <laughs> happening there, okay? Right. So right. that's- Yeah, I would say this, I, I would say, you know, we all have some sort of calling to help the nation one way or the other. Some. Well, you know what? I can't say that for sure. I know that most of us do. Many of us do. And this is our way of doing it. Um, we all have varying backgrounds. We all have different degrees of interaction with our community, whether it be political or whether it be religious or whether it be, you know, uh, boots on the ground doing both um, uh, or, or multiple ways. Some of us run businesses uh, and, and, and we've all had varying degrees of in input and we have all been paying attention for bulk of our lives 
And so I would say, to echo your point, David, we, we're not uh, bona fide official journalists, but we what we do uh, is Arash Media exists to collate the news and bring it to you a wide variety of sources. We have gone so far as to help explain the difference between all of the different news sources and encourage you to go look at different ones, regardless of what side of the political spectrum uh, they lay on or you lay on. And we also do everything that we can to uh, to be balanced when it comes to uh, either the Armenian uh, Assembly or the uh, ANCA, Armenian National Committee of America, uh, because both political organizations are doing good work. And so, you know, I, I can attest to myself being apolitical when it comes to this. I, I am not going to choose a side, uh, even though I have a history. Um, and, and so I, I would say that anybody who wants to criticize this is, is free to do so. I would encourage you to uh, see the body of work that, that, that we've created uh, and see it for, for what it is. And hopefully you will go and do some investigation yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last thing before we move on is I would like to add to, yes, I will support everybody that's doing good, but you will hear my opinion on people that I feel are doing bad things to make an right. So anyways, right. um, right. you're, so you, are, you are free to continue watching us. As David mentioned in the back yeah. chatter, you're also sometimes free not to watch us, but I right. think we're doing some cool things and we're bringing some pertinent conversations and 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 we do see the 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 the, the growth in, the, in in our followers and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts yeah. appreciate everything and every one of you all right dude. yeah so look well let's get real quick into the election results okay so the cc the central election committee on sunday did affirm the, and confirm that the election results were indeed the results that they were so pashinyan nico pashinyan winning and what was a landslide um according to these election results, uh, he ended up with 53.9, let me double check this, hold on, I want to give the right number, guys, 53.91% of the votes. Which is not 54%, just to lay that right. out. And so, exactly, so what that means, Rich, I'm glad you brought that up, the CEC chairman, Tigran Makunchan, confirmed that Pashinyan's party will be one vote short of the two thirds parliamentary majority, which is required for amending the Armenian constitution, calling for calling a referendum or impeaching the largely ceremonial president of the Republic. So his party falls short of those things. They cannot amend the constitution. They cannot call a referendum or impeaching the, the president. So they have enjoyed that. Pashinyan has enjoyed that since 2018. He will no longer enjoy that. But the way this broke out, and now it's also important to note, the uh, Ser Sarkisian's party, the Pati Bunem uh, party, which means what again, Greg? Uh, the I Have Honor, right? I Have Honor Alliance. They had 5.23%. That was short of the 7% for a minority, but because they were the, they were the closest in third, they will, they will get seven seats in the parliament. The uh, Kocharian, which was the uh, Hayastan Dashnik, or the Armenian Alliance Party, they will get 29 seats. And then the Civil Contract Party, or Nikoposhanian's party, will have 71 seats in the 107 seat Armenian National Assembly. So that's uh, the results there. Of course, uh, Kocharian is challenging that. They will still challenge us in the courts. Uh, and actually, Kocharian has gone a step further, and he is saying that within a year and a half, we are likely to see new snap elections. So I think it's interesting that um, he has come out saying that. Um, so we'll see. We're gonna we're obviously gonna keep a very close eye on on what is happening there. Greg, Rich, you know, if you have anything yeah. that you'd like to add, um, you know. yeah. I mean, let's let's just obviously move along. I mean, there's no. I mean, there's comments, but no comments, right? Um, Kocharian predicts another snap election. Um, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, there is what do you call it? There, there is uh, Armenian alliance. They, they, they are challenging it through the courts still, right? I uh, believe so. I, I believe so. Yeah. So let's see uh, here. It says he affirms uh, the bloc's decision to challenge these results. Armenia's constitutional court. So it's still being challenged. Um, but you know, things are the, the CEC just confirmed that it is what it is. So yeah. um, then, uh, yeah. obviously, then there's the, this, uh, you know. Have opinions on the, on the next news items, right? Well, uh, 
the only thing I will say is that the OSCE and other monitoring organizations did say it was it was largely well run and it was free and fair elections. Everyone had the right to campaign and the right to to run. Um, so we have yet to see what the Constitutional Court comes up with um, on the on Kocharian's uh, challenges to it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All righty. Um, obviously, yeah. what uh, the, the next news items are actually to me they're they're kind of one and the same. Which I'm gonna kind of blur through them, but they're all sequential. Um, while occupying Armenia, Aliyev now wants a peace treaty with Yerevan. That also kind of falls into the rebuttal of Armenia says no peace treaty with Azerbaijan without Karabakh settlement. So on what I think about uh, what, uh, what, what, uh, what Aliyev is trying to uh, uh, what do you call it. Uh, propose here. When Aliyev says there needs to be a peace treaty, while A, there are occupying troops, B, there are, what do you call it, um, harassment of our villagers by those occupying troops, there are 200 plus POWs. Um, there are massive, massive amounts of irregularities, in uh, you know, uh, unsettling um, scenarios to this uh, peace settlement, quote unquote. Um, I think what he's trying to say is um, with all the nine points, we want to kind of sign, seal, deliver this. Right. In reality, yeah. that is a non-starter for Armenians because we just spoke uh, about uh, there's 150,000 Armenians that are in Artsakh and we need to make sure that their fate is secure. Absolutely in no way possible within the confines of Azerbaijan. Okay. Exactly. Not to mention... Not to mention, again, I, you see me kind of like beat this, I don't know, dead horse if this is a PC statement or not, uh, or not, uh, that we as Armenians need to stop demanding things that have been handed to us in the abridged version. So what do I mean by that? Had we been constantly talking about the return of Armenians to Nakhichevan, Artsakh would not have been assaulted. Have we now, now that we have Artsakh fractioned into one third of its existence okay sure we're talking about a Listen. settlement a settlement of sorts right well what about the shahumyan region that's part of the artsakh of soviet union what about hadrut i think they want to see this mangled piece be somehow absorbed into azerbaijan yeah. and maybe given some sort of autonomy that is uh, out of question yeah greg to your point uh i was on a zoom yesterday that a colleague shared with me um and they were talking about how essentially if you can defend your territory you can you have the right to negotiate whatever you want if yeah. you can occupy a territory you could pretty much do and say what you want exactly. yeah look that's appears to be the reality we're facing but you know you make great points really really important points if this is supposed to be uh, the Azerbaijan of the Soviet era, the, the way the lines are going to be drawn, the Artsakh of Soviet era, you're right, those regions were part of, of Artsakh. And so anyway, the it's important for people to realize that Ali have made these comments. And again, he's a, he is he's a professional at trolling us so well. And I'm, maybe you guys, Rich, Greg, maybe you guys can elaborate on what I'm getting at here. He said these, he made these comments saying that he hopes Armenia will agree to a peace treaty as uh, he made those remarks in Baku during a meeting with visiting foreign ministers from the European Union. Yeah. Okay. And again, yeah. And again, as, it's being juxtaposed as if, and it's being pandered as if like, here, here are my terms. If there's going to be any, any bad play here, it's going to be from the Armenian. And exactly. He, so exactly. Jivan say that again, he goes, how can you have, uh, and all the lists, you know, uh, uh, Afghan, soldiers, Arab, uh, uh, mercenaries, Turkey, Azerbaijan, all these people. And then you have the whole like, uh, but what about Artsakh also? Like the, 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 the double, you know, so, both sides should knock it off, you know? Mm, right. no, no. So you, you guys, you guys have seen in the movies and stuff where, uh, you know, there's, there's a group of kids in a car and another kid trying to get into the car and they're taunting the kid like, yeah, come on, get in the car. And then as soon as he tries to open the door, they move the car forward and they go, no, no, we're just joking. And then they do it again. Armenians have to quit being the guy trying to get in the car. 
because we do that with everything. And what's happened is the Turks and the Azeris have both been doing that this whole time. And let me tell you something. They, they have no intention. They have never had an intention of letting go of Nahichivan. They have never had an intention of letting go of Artsakh. And they have, and they are not going to let go of any of this right now. Every concession that Armenians make is going to lead to more concessions that have to get made. They will never, and I, right. I will stake my life and reputation on this. They will never fess up to anything, and they will never honor any agreement that is made. Period. And yeah, full I stop. As we have seen right throughout since since November and even before November nine, there what there were at least two ceasefires before November nine, right? So and then they didn't. So, they so didn't we're negotiating know. from the wrong perspective, in other words, right? right? So you know we are sitting here having this academic conversation of where should the borders be and all this, and and to your point, David, that's exactly right. As soon as if they can occupy the territory, they're going to. Which which brings us, you know, to the next. Uh, point of contention, which is that there are still Azeri soldiers in Armenia and they are threatening our right, village. Right, right. So why are we having this conversation about, about right. you, know, you know, putting down weapons and, and about a peace right. treaty, which is not going to exist anyway? Well, right. To that and, point, and, to that and, point and, we'll, we'll move this along, right? To that point, I always remember, um, you know, all of a sudden, Armenians, Armenians being uh, masters of understanding how they used to call Artsakh, the Artsakh and the seven adjoining regions. Well, where does it talk about that now? Where's the Artsakh and the seven adjoining regions? Because right now it looks like no regions and a fraction of Artsakh. Yep. You know what I mean? Where are all these uh, uh, of masters of understanding of you know geopolitics and former uh, what do you call it uh, uh, borders of a country that no longer exists? Soviet Union. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. right. So right. look, guys. Plan guys plan to, to both of your points you have both your points and then let's definitely move on i don't mean to be legal aliyev he went on to say more stuff blaming armenia right saying hey it's armenia is the one not coming to the table to negotiate uh and we'll get right there rich but he of course did not mention that the about the azeri soldiers on our lands did not mention the pow's did not mention the cultural genocide that's occurring of the destruction of churches and historical monuments and so again i just hope that these eu leaders are aware of those things that are not being said by Aliyev. Thank you. Well, for sure. Yeah. And he's and and he is he is trying to frame the POWs that they have as prison not just as prisoners of war, but as terrorists so they doesn't have to follow right. the rules. So right. why are we negotiating with someone like this? Like why why are we going with good faith saying, oh well we're gonna make this treat it's ridiculous. Right. And and I hope that it was Ruben uh Rubinian who is the, mil the member of parliament that's part of Pashinyan's block, my step, that, that was saying, he's actually the standing, he's the, the he's on the stand, head of the standing parliament's committee on foreign relations. He's the one that we showed the article about saying that uh, there's no peace treaty with Azerbaijan without Karabakh settlement. We have to watch this closely because I hope that Pashinyan will hold up to that. You know, we have yet to see that he has not been in a position of he has not been in a position to be able to really uphold anything uh, because of the, the losses we've suffered from this war. I hope that that we're able to, to uphold this anyway, which is know, which to, is uh, why which is why people are questioning his integrity, saying maybe he's in on the deal. That's why. Yeah, um, exactly. So, move, yeah, let's keep along, it moving. Sorry. Uh, yeah, to move along, obviously, um, you know, um, let's refocus now on Armenia. <clears throat> right. There is um, the issue of the POWs, right? So there's the Armenian Legal Center filed seven new POW cases at the European court. Um, one thing that people need to understand, <clears throat> not only does Azerbaijan constantly troll Armenians, and when I say troll, I mean genocide. Sorry, I'm just gonna do a leap that way. Um, it is also making a mockery of international laws. You are in fact not allowed, in fact, not allowed to stand to what do you call it, to 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 make POWs stand trial. Okay. Right. That it's illegal. Not yeah. something that we do. Okay. Um, so that is kind of what uh, Armenia is facing right now. There's there are I believe 15 people that are on trial. Uh, you know they're doing this whatever banana republic style trial um, against these Armenian uh, <clears throat> soldiers. And there are still 200 more that are in captivity um, without any, and we know exactly what uh, 
Aliyev wants to do with them. He told that to Erdogan on a bus from Shushi back to wherever the hell they're going right. to Baku, that he's going to use them as bargaining chips to make sure that we uh, sign everything that we need to sign. Reminding Armenians listening, and I don't know why I have to keep doing that, the ones that argued against me back in the day about me being a little too militant, Armenians released all the POWs. Right. For right, what reasons, true. I don't know. For Hopefully because we're good people. Hopefully maybe because Pashinyan doesn't know what he's doing because he also gave an entire map of all the landmines in Agdam. Um, but I digress. Which, by um, the way, they said wasn't enough. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, there's the uh, International Comparative Law Center in partnership with the Armenian Legal Center for Justice and Human Rights, and Human Rights has filed seven new cases for the European Court of Human Rights um, for uh, regarding prisoners of war that have been taken captive in Azerbaijan. That was an update regarding POWs. Um, but I mean, yeah, uh, uh, Greg, uh, we upheld uh, the not, that item of the, the November 9, uh, eight, nine step nine points we upheld that we released our pow's um azerbaijan is not for the purpose of political reasons so um, yeah absolutely sorry if, sorry if i was gone uh, somebody came to say goodbye to me my nieces and nephews so. no problem, no problem. <laughs> um yeah uh, and then also regarding the pow's so, uh, you know thank you for to the osce for at least talking about it but the osca chair has urged for the re- release of POWs and the resumption of talks. Uh, you know, it's not enough, right? More needs to be done, but at least they're talking about it. I will say that at least they were talking about that. Uh, her name is Ann Lind. She's the chairperson of the OSCE. She, her quote is, there's still no real peace agreement between the parties um, and that, uh, you know, they, they have a special- I don't know what there is to active. talk about. Yeah. Honestly, resumption of talks just lights me up. What is there to talk about? Put them on a plane, get them home. This is over, right? Like right. if it, we're we're done fighting, send them home. That's it. I I mean I know that sounds simplistic, but no 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 you know, actually it's, like it doesn't sound simplistic. Re- returning men yeah. who have fought in a war yeah. is not contingent upon right. redrawing lines. No no right, Rich. I think what she's referring to is also resuming talks on the status of Artsakh. Whoa, well. whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're going to deal with the POWs, you're going to default to what Richard just said. If you, there are known, first of all, does the world, well, does the world know of the POWs? Yes, they do. So it's a not fact. Not enough, not enough. Well, no, no, meaning yeah. like if, if, if a uh, European parliamentarian needs to be at, be told like, here, there are X, Y, Z amount of people, Armenians held in a prison in Baku. Is that a fact? Yes, it is. Then, Richard, that is the most simplistic. Go no. on a plane, get him home. Greg, Rich, I'm not arguing that. I'm saying I know what, you're not. Lind you're is, not. What, what Lind is referring to, she wants OSCE talks to resume. Which, but again, I'm sorry, this is a weak statement. Here's her quote. I have a special representative who's very active. I had a physical meeting with him to discuss the situation. We have co-chairmanship comprising of the United States, Russia, and France, OSCE, right? who try to play a positive role, even if they have not been able to enter the area for the last year, partly because of COVID and other reasons. I'm sorry, that is the weakest possible statement ever by the people that are supposed to be brokering peace there. Sorry. For sure. So, so I, I saw an article and I, and of course this same thing happened to me last week is this week as it happened last, last week is where I saw it. I tried to go back to it. It refreshed, couldn't find it. But I saw an article, maybe you guys can back me up on this, or, uh, that, that Aliyev had made a comment that, and follow, my, my, follow this, this dialogue for a second, that the release of the 200 POWs is contingent upon Armenia acknowledging that 75 plus percent of what we knew as Artsakh Right. is actually uh, Azerbaijan. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason that he's doing that is to suggest, and this is the salient point, that those soldiers are not actually soldiers or warriors or POWs, but they are terrorists. 
And as a result of being terrorists, because 75, 80% of that, of that land is technically Azerbaijan, they can be tried as terrorists rather than held as POW. Well, well, and that's part of the problem here is what he's doing is he's holding human beings hostage right. in order to amplify the situation and put pressure on Armenia to acquiesce and say, fine, 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 just get my guys home. Right. And that's a problem. And we need someone to come in. Like if it's the OSCE group, great, great. But quit, quit just screwing around. Let's get to it. Exactly. You know, anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So the. You know, um, I don't know if it makes sense to to revisit the uh, Azeri soldiers in Armenia really quick, if it's okay, uh, just to to bring that home, so everybody knows. Azeri soldiers are still threatening Armenian villagers, and they're still accusing Armenia of firing at their positions. Armenia is denying that. There are still, as far as we know, around a thousand Azeri soldiers in Gehar Kunik region, which is near Lake Sevan, and in Sunik. We're still, the uh, Russian soldiers are supposed to be coming to Gehar Kunik. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. That's really the update there uh, right. on that. The links are already up in there, so if you want to read the articles, they're already there. Exactly. Very good. Um, yeah. Uh, shall we, uh, you guys call it where we're going next? Let's, uh, let's, let's, you know, let's dive into Armenia. We mentioned, uh, we mentioned what do you call it? There's a, there's a, uh, an, an incident right now and uh where um what do you call it the i guess the the governors of the northern northern uh region um uh, lorry government or a lorry government governor demands resignation armenian officials lacking faith in pashinyan told uh to resign right um right right so that was this was pashinyan and the lorry governor who was, was part of his his block uh they're both telling people that uh, are basically op that are opposing Pashinyan that they should resign. Right. To, me, to me, this really stood out and is just not, to me, that is not very, does not uh, scream democratic to me. Uh, no, no. So again, and you know, our opinion, and we're stating it, um, pointing out where things seem to be uh, very, very, very uh, undemocratic, right? So part of democracy is that there's always, you know, discerning viewpoints and there's the ability to say what we think is uh, incompetence. Um, and if others, especially inside Armenia are saying that somehow they're being silenced. Um, yeah, I really, you know, I really, th there's pause for concern there. And I think OSCE and all of the uh, outside forces should definitely also <laughs> take notice. Um, spoiler alert, they never do. Um, well, moving along. Yeah. So, let's uh i guess uh, a big key point now is that uh there is russia turkey are trying to coordinate e efforts on normalizing the baku yerevan dialogue um i believe also this is you know we haven't pulled that up but uh, i think i saw today that um the foreign ministers of turkey and russia have met or are meeting or are talking right um what does that mean for us you know, I don't know. All, well, all I know is this. Um, I know that Russia is there to stay in Artsakh for a while. And that may or may not be a bad thing. Um, number one. Number two, that is definitely an annoying thing and a bad thing for Azerbaijan because, you know, wanting to get rid of Armenians, well, now you have Russians on your soil too. Um, and also the way that it's framed, there's really not much to kind of extrapolate from here is that they, both of them want to see a dialogue to uh, to come to fruition. My answer is sure. A dialogue is always a good idea that's mediated and it's not kind of forced down your throat. Okay. Right. My problem with it is, you know, why is Turkey involved? You know, what what right does Turkey have to be involved there? Uh, you know, they 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 are very much involved in this whole thing now. When there was supposed to be OCE, OCE almost seems like it's non-existent now. Um, you know, yes, it exists, but it's not playing the active role it needs to play. Um, and then Russia really is just playing all sides. That's what it seems like, right? Like, like they do best. That's what they do the best, right? Yeah. Well, to uh, kind of to expedite the conversation with a little injection of one one point, these international organizations will need to have a come to Jesus moment soon. 
because you are right, David. Essentially, these are becoming uh, 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 useless bureaucracies, United Nations included. Um, just the other day, Absolutely. somebody said uh, um, there was an atrocious, and I'm not, I don't think we've, uh, we've put that on there because how much can we re-traumatize ourselves and our guests? And yes, one of the comments that was stated to you, David, is that you know, honest media at times can be a little bit negative. Um, folks, the news out of the motherland and Artsakh is unfortunately nothing but the worst of the worst, okay? Whether it's incompetent or it's something, there are good positive items that we try to catch, but by and large, it's a lot of things that we as Armenians will have to deal with. Um, and one of those things is, I don't know, you all saw that circling on the interwebs, right? Um, the, uh, the article of a uh, children's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a school book where there was a depiction of a girl putting an ax into an Armenian soldier's head in the back of his head, essentially, you know, stabbing him in the back. It was, it was recently, I think even Zoravik uh, wrote something about it. It was like, people were appalled that this can even happen. But when there's such atrocities and our POWs are uh, being held captive, how can you be surprised at it? Um, this was an Azeri school kid? Yeah, this is an Azeri school. Yeah, this is an Azeri uh, 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 officially printed, what do you call it, school textbook, where there's a depiction of an Armenian uh, soldier doing something seemingly aggressive to a, to a resident, and there's a girl with an axe to inside of his head. It's not like she's swinging. It's already in his head. Okay? And this is a cartoon depiction. Well, we know they've been teaching their you know, kindergartners and, you know, to hate us. Uh, but I found the article that I mentioned that Baku says that they will return the POWs if most of Karabakh is recognized as Azerbaijan. Right. So, there you have it. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, so you know, there, is, there are people out there that think that Aliyev is, is a little bit like too giddy with all things pointing in his direction, right? Between a weak Armenian government, uh, between Turkey being allowed to be part of this um, and everything that transpired in Artsakh. By the way, one thing that's not being mentioned is they're not releasing how many Azeris died. But what I'm saying here is, and the, and the estimate is really quite grim. Um, what I'm saying here uh, is there are a lot of analysts that say that this man, rather than capitalize on what he already gained and try to figure, you know, the end game here, he needs to really watch out with these, you know, chess games that he's trying to play. Because I'm telling you, when the Armenian nation kind of gains, regains what it just saw from its blows of all sorts, uh, what we just talked to Jiran about, um, dude, I'm telling you, like that man has a lot to worry. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, so he should really. You think Aliyev has a lot to worry about? Yeah, I do. I personally do. I personally do. Yeah, because the next thing that he's gonna probably do. Can you imagine if he tries to push Russia out of the Caucasus? Okay, like literally, he's that thirsty with, with he's that drunk with power that he's gonna go like, oh, you know, and now also Russians out of my uh, out of my lands, please. You know what I mean? There'll be, there'll be war, man. There could be more war. Uh, I think the person that's drunk with power is Pashinyan right now. That's who I think. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, obviously yeah. not in the eyes of Aliyev and Erdogan, uh, but yeah. Um, oh, gentlemen, so much to say. Um, uh, one, one thing that we will continue with the news items, two items that I wasn't able to link up, two things that we should mention. And Bridge, there's no nothing to pull up. There are two also domestic items since we're in Armenia. Um, one is that the Tavos region, right next to Lori that we just discussed, um, there's an old general from the old guard, one of the elder generals, and he's being forced into retirement. Some are saying this is political, for sure it is political, because he's one of those, you know, as Pashinyan came and he kind of sacked most of the military, that was in 2018, that's what he was doing. Um, this was one of the old guard generals that kind of still stayed around for whatever reasons. I don't know, maybe dodged the bullet or kind of flew under Pashinyan's radar. Um, and he's now being asked to retire, if not already, has been told to resign soon. That is a sign of trouble. Why? Because Tabush is also part of that nine point, um, what do you call it, uh, horrendous capitulation. Um, some are saying that that might be one of that, those stories. 
another one is again not being negative but infrastructure story those of you that have been following other news news sites have noticed that there's a lot of trouble coming out of the ararat valley of farmers saying that their vegetables are drying up why because the infrastructure of irrigation has collapsed not collapsing has collapsed so imagine uh and i think david and i you and i spoke about this about the civil net even has a uh, good old civil net has a, a, a news art, a video reel on um, talking to a farmer where half of his, um, what do you call it, uh, field is flooded, which is not good. You want irrigation, you don't want flood. And the other half, it looks like uh, the Mojave Desert, okay? Um, so again. Greg, uh, Greg, could you, uh, I know we're, we're going over, but could, how is Tabush implied in the November 9 agreement? Okay, so you know Armenia, again, we need to be very cognizant of the map of Armenia all the time. There are these little holes, right? Yes, yes, are, yes, 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 yes. Two yes. of the holes. And, and just so everyone knows, Tavush, northeast region northeast, of Armenia, yes. the northeast province. By the way, Tavush, the most volatile region up until we lost have most of Arta. Right. So that because it directly borders yeah. Azerbaijan, right? Yeah, go ahead. Well, go ahead. now everything borders. Well, right, I know. But before, it was the only part that directly bordered, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So for everyone that wants, you know, transparency and democracy, let's uh, let's be transparent about what is about to transpire. I really want to know. I want to know what's going on. Exactly. Um, well, but in hey. the meantime, and but in the meantime, yeah, grievances of people on the ground, even those that voted for Mr. Pashinyan, there is a total collapse of the irrigation infrastructure. Cool. I really don't think you can blame that on the previous administration. It's been already three years. Well, look, I mean, whether you're pro or against Pashinyan or Kuchar and whoever, we have to hold whoever is in power accountable. To your point, Greg, we have to hold them accountable. I know we don't live there, but people who live there do. And even though we don't live there, as part of the Armenian nation, we have a right to. They, we can send letters, we can call, we can do all kinds of things to organizations. They may not listen, but we can still do it. We need to still hold them accountable. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. Sorry. Absolutely. Greg, what did you want to touch on next, man? The, yeah. What do we got? We, I think that's, uh, well, there's, uh, you know, let's let's skip on through. There's some positives here from good old US of A. Um, and one of the number one uh, positive items that we saw, uh, what do you call it, uh, we saw coming is the funding that has been uh, eked out for Armenia and Artsakh. How is it going to be lumped into this? Who, uh, you know, who's going to distribute it to Artsakh? It doesn't matter, you're right, David, a little bit of that positivity um, is the fact that we have the, you know, the house is appropriating funding for Armenia and Artsakh in the tune yeah. of, I believe, $55 million. 52, 52, 52 million. So 50 million for Armenia. Yeah. 2 million for Artsakh demining, 2 million specifically for demining in Artsakh, 50 million in aid to Armenia, 2 million in aid to Artsakh. And I want to say, I, I want to thank, I'll thank on air here, and I'm going to send a personal letter to her. I want to thank my Congresswoman, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. She I is chair. Her. What's that? I love her. Yeah, she is chair of the House Foreign uh, Relations or the House Appropriations committee so she is directly involved with this all my calls all my emails my direct emails signed by multiple constituents uh, it this is very validating because uh you know i'd like to think that that had something to do with making sure that they got something in there because rich like you always say and like we talk about often on this show we have the ability to um advocate with our members of, of congress and so I'm very, very glad to see this. It's not the 100 million that the assembly asked for. It's not the 250 million that ANC has asked for, but 52 million um, is something and that will help. Uh, but we do need more and we're gonna have to keep pushing. Yeah. All right, um, moving along with, uh, with America, right? I believe there was another big, big item that just was released a few days ago is that the state of New Jersey yes. recognized Artsakh. Amazing. Um, 
Yes, it's great. They, they became the 10th state. They're the 10th state to do it, uh, So, which is really great. Thank you, New Jersey State. Uh, by the way, Frank Colon, who was part of the appropriating of the $55 million. Um, 52, 52. He, he is a representative from New Jersey as well. Yes. Um, there is a, this is an, another, mm -hmm. Um, what are we, okay. Lastly, um, there is also uh, in California, right? If we're going past New Jersey, in California, yeah, bring it home. The Assembly Member Nazarian announces 11 million allocation to Armenian programs. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. That that is very substantial. Nine million is going to establish a Tumo Center, which actually was just announced. There's going to be a TUMO Center in the San Fernando Valley. One million is going to the University of Southern California Institute of Armenian Studies. Our friend uh, Salpi, um, which is amazing, um, that, that's going to go to them. And then one million is going to go to the Lark Musical Society. I actually got to meet some, some people from there uh, working with through the diocese, uh, Western Diocese in LA. Um, they're a nonprofit that delivers high quality classical music education. Uh, curating performances. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to rewind on that. Nine million is going to go to Tumo and uh, one million is going to go to USC. Yep. Okay. Uh, That's quite a bit for Tumo in LA, right? It's quite yeah. a bit. I mean, well, whatever. I'll, I'll be positive. Um, okay. You know, we'll see. We'll see how they run the Tumo, right? In Armenia, uh, I can't speak for the other locations, France and other locations. But in Armenia, it is a free after-school program. So the students do not pay anything for TUMO. So I don't know if that's part of the $9 million going into that, but I don't know. Now, and also, I want to raise a question, and we will find find out later. I know TUMO in Armenia is for Armenian kids. Is that is TUMO San Fernando going to be a discriminatory program for we have to find Armenians out. or non-Armenians as well? Mm -hmm. And if so, then the appropriation of funds for Armenian culture and arts is going to non-armenians you feel me anyways i got questions. sure sure although okay. yeah i mean i got questions. I hear you i don't we have to look into that i don't know perhaps one day we can have a guest from tumo on the show but the we have to look and see how their model is in other other countries as well because i wonder like i can't imagine that france uh the tumo france is only armenians there you know i, I would i would be surprised Rich, you feel me though? If this is a 11 million grant for Armenian arts and culture, why why are we building a boys and girls club for everybody? Just Greg, it's a lot more than a boys and girls club, man. It's, it's no, no, I know, I know. It's it's, it's a great educational program, but do you you feel me? Anyways, it's a lot of it's a lot of technology education. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I've been to there. I've right. been to Tumo Yerevan. It's an amazing facility. Yeah, but I have questions. Well, um, we can ask them. I should ask them. Um, and yes. Lastly, obviously, you know, sports, right? Um, yeah, these were positives. These were positives. So I wanted to share them. Um, uh, let me see which one is. Uh, yeah, the Armenian wrestler, um, literally, I'm reading the quote here, destroys an Azeri counterpart. Um, uh, and another, uh, Lova Gevorgian, another wrestler. No, that's him. It's the same guy, Greg. Sorry, it's the same guy. Same guy. Um, he, uh, yeah, uh, a fellow, you know, a, a soldier of the Armenian. Yeah, he's, he there. happens to be a soldier. He happens to be an Armenian soldier, which is amazing. Yeah. Makes him even more a hero, I think. To become the European champion. Uh, congratulations, Dova. That's my uncle's name. God rest his soul. Um, fantastic. Um, and I've been, we've been seeing this on and on and on. Another thing positive in, uh, in, uh, what do you call it? In, in sports, we don't have it listed is that Levon Aharonian, who I believe is still, even though he's transitioning to be an American uh, representative in chess, he is still in our, uh, represents Armenia. He uh, defeated the world champion, Carl's Magnuson, which is a big deal. He's a, you're like into chess. These, this is like the world cup of chess. Um, sucks, so, subsequently, Armenia defeats Azerbaijan and Albania at the 2021 Davis Cup tennis tournament. Yeah. Not big into uh, tennis, but uh, go go Armenians. Another thing I want to say, if we're in, uh, speaking of sports, um, there were um, six Armenians from because of our friend Natalie Gerboyan, 
that is uh, uh, competed in her tenth Ironman. It's amazing. Six, six Armenians, six Armenians uh, were in uh, participation from Armenia. Who came here and she met him accidentally because um, she saw somebody with an Armenian flag. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Um, this Ironman in Idaho had the highest rate of essentially uh, Ironman is you get a you know there's no like when you come in it's if you make it you make it if you don't you just don't get that you know that trophy mm -hmm. it had a, a highest rated uh amount of people falling out due to heat exhaustion oh, wow. which usually it's the the rate of like non-completion is around like i think like 18 8 to 15 percent this one was 27 percent not finishing the race all six armenians became became iron armenians anyways that's it for uh, for my yeah, show. Natalie's a good friend in in Los Angeles, so she, that's amazing how many Ironmans she has completed herself. Ten. Ten. Yeah, it's amazing. Same. Yeah. Richard, very good. Yeah, how are you, dude? Good. You want to do the call to action? Yes. Um, let's do that. Yeah, I mean, still uh, follow the links. Contact Congress. Right, Rich. Uh, Azeris are still on American soil. Uh, on American Azeris are on Armenian soil. soil. Right. We have uh, the first one, which is directly to speak to the Ar the Azeris that are in Tunic, um, and this is from the ANCA. Uh, the next one is to urge your senators to support uh, the demining in Artsakh. Right. Which to that uh, point, Rich, they the Senate have sent a letter. Uh, senators have sent a letter requesting for that as well for uh, demining. So senators are on board for that too. So we have to keep pushing. Right. Yeah. Uh, there, there is a, a House Resolution 240, uh, which for some reason is not coming. There it is. The um, PMWs, yeah. yeah. And we again, I'm gonna we're gonna have all the links up in the um, yeah. in the feed here in a moment. Um, that's the POWs, and, and it's important for everyone to realize that. This the the resolutions they're only as good as the current Congress. I learned that recently. They don't carry over. They have to be reintroduced. There's still only 55 co-sponsors on there, I believe. We need to keep pushing. So thank you, Rich. So what that means is basically uh, for all of the all I'm just going to call it out for all the Republicans who keep waving a flag and saying they're so pro-military and they're right. not signing right. on to this. Um, I just think they're horseshit. They need to right. be. They we need to just push them. Right. Um, and it's up to 58. Point. It's up to 58. I just checked. It's up to 58. But you're right, man. Sadly, because Schiff sponsored it or introduced it, a lot of Republicans are not signing on. Go ahead. Yeah, because 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 in America, you can't be you can't be um, you can be held politically hostage by your association. In other words, because Schiff put it up, no one wants to support anything that, that Schiff put, because it's a it, it, it's it's just bad. They, they have no integrity. It's beyond uh, angering. But All right. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, uh, ladies and friends that are with us and watching, um, thank you. Uh, I think the, the conversation we had, and we're going to, you know, I'm going to hold myself to it. I'm going to continue advocating for a duo project revival. Um, you can reach out to any one of us in the next few weeks. We will have that link available to you anywhere and anywhere, any time. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm not making this personal, but I think it's it's important for this project to come to life. Um, Absolutely. Shout out to Sosi Mansurian. Thank you for all your support. She's been active on the chat. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Richard and David, for always being the gracious co-hosts um you know it's not always easy to do what we're doing um there are cer certain commentaries that come our way but the point is we want to make sure that people understand what's going on yonder there and in the political sphere here in america as well like for example it's uh, you know i haven't been reminded that only 58 uh politicians in the united states give a damn about pow's in baku but now I am reminded and I'm a little bit encouraged to do something about it. So if one, if all of us can do a little bit, we can achieve a lot together. That's well, my concern. 
We'll see. We have a great show for you next week, an important show uh, with an amazing guest. We could say it now or we can just release it through. Sign up, you know, you can, uh, I think, email us. Say it, man. Say it. If he's yeah, confused. we have, uh, we have uh, someone uh, you know, important to the understanding of what's going on in Armenia. We have none other than William Bayramian is going to come out and speak with us. Um, next week, he put out, uh, last few weeks ago, he put out a very important uh, article explaining where the money flows in terms of influence in Armenia and explain to us what is going on in terms of foreign foreign influence in domestic affairs, which, you know, us as Armenians, we would hope it's not going to happen, but it happens everywhere. And in Armenia, it's actually happening at a disproportionate uh, level. So we hope to see you then. That's my spiel. Yeah. So next Thursday, 9 p.m. Pacific time. Very good. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Okay. Have a good one.